In this lesson, we will review conjugate acid-base pairs, and then we will learn about the self-ionization of water. Acids can be identified because they start with a hydrogen. Here's our acid. And a little more information, this happens to be a weak acid. Uh, it's very helpful for um, acid-base reactions to draw an arrow that represents what the H plus is doing. Now, if you look at the reactants and products, the H plus is going from the weak acid, that's what acids do, they donate protons, to the weak base, and that's what bases do, they accept protons. To identify the conjugate acid-base pair, we're going to look at and see what's left when the acid does what acids do. Well, acids donate protons. What's left after it donates a proton is that. Conjugates are always exact opposites. Note it says weak here, and so we're going to look for strong. And this is an acid, so we're going to look for a base. And the, um, the strong conjugate base is this bluish color, and we'll put that there. And now let's go ahead with the other one, with the water. It says here that water is a weak base. Bases accept protons. What's left after it accepts its proton is the H3O plus. That's called the hydronium ion. Well, because we started with a weak base, the water is a weak base, the opposite of that would be a strong conjugate acid. So we've identified our um, conjugate acid-base pairs. Now let's go ahead and practice doing that again with this reaction. It tells us here already that um, HSO4 minus 1 is a weak acid. What do acids do? They donate protons. So there's our arrow with our proton. What's left after the acid donates its proton is this. Um, that's going to be its conjugate. Because the acid is a weak acid, we're going to look for the strong conjugate base, which is this. And we'll do that same thing then with the water, which accepted the proton. When it accepted the proton, it became hydronium. And again, once again, opposite. So we started as a weak base, and we're going to end up as a strong conjugate acid. So we've identified our acid-base pairs. It's important you understand that they're opposites and that you identify what's happening to the proton, what's giving up the proton, and what's taking the proton. OK, new topic. Uh, we're going to talk about the self-ionization of water. If I never get this in the right spot. Okay, so I need you to imagine, I, imagine two water molecules hitting one another. Let's say this water molecule is going this direction and this water molecule is going this direction, and they were to collide. Um, can you imagine this proton transferring over to this water molecule? It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen occasionally. What you would have left over is uh, a water without a hydrogen, a proton, and then you'd have a water with an extra proton. What do we call those? Well, of course, this is called hydroxide, and this is called hydronium. How do we know that water occasionally does this? Well, it turns out that while water, water is a poor conductor, it conducts minute amounts of electricity. The reason it does is because of the presence of these ions. What are their concentrations? Well, experiments have shown that at room temperature, the concentration of the hydroxide ion is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar, and so is the hydronium ion concentration. Same thing. Now, that's a very small concentration. In fact, if I write it out, it has six zeros with a 1. And same thing for the hydronium. I think you'll agree that that's a very low concentration. Again, that's a molarity. But we know that's true because water does conduct minute amount of electricity. Now, why is that a number important to us? Actually, that 7 is important to us, particularly in the hydronium ion concentration. Well, we come up with that because those are very small numbers. Instead of quoting concentrations, we come up with a scale called the pH scale. And neutral water, as you probably know, has a pH of 7. What pH stands for is the power on the hydrogen ion, specifically the hydronium ion, which is another name for the hydrogen ion. We're looking at that power. Now, we drop the negative because we don't like to work in negatives. But when we're saying pH, we're actually saying a concentration. And when we say pH 7, we're actually saying this concentration, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now, what mathematically allows us to do that is this equation, which we'll work with more tomorrow. pH equals negative the log 
of the hydrogen or the hydronium ion, same thing. If we plug in that number, if we were to plug in 1 times 10 to the negative 7th in here, take the negative log of it, we would end up with pH equals 7. That's mathematically how we manipulate, how we get the power to be a regular number. Um, in review, we went over acid-base pairs, conjugate acid-base pairs, and the self-ionization of water. Thank you.